We are starting a monthly series here called TFI Topic of the Month, aka T3M. I like short names, acronyms. And the topic for the month of January was cost cutting versus cost efficiency. As you know, as we walked into 2023, we saw major cost cutting measures across industries, which included better control on cloud cost as well as trimming down teams, which swelled during the pandemic. For this series, I'll be sitting down with founders, CEOs, and leaders of the industry to better understand what's going on and what organizations can do to ensure cost efficiency. Today, we have with us Lucas Gently, CEO and co-founder of Loft Labs. Lucas, it's great to have you on the show. Good to be here, Swapno. Thanks for inviting me again. What are some of the broader trends you are seeing in the market when it comes to cost cutting or as I look at it, companies becoming more cost effective. We definitely see a lot of uh, focus on cost recently. Um, I mean, it is, it's always been a topic that companies obviously uh, have on their radar, but there is a lot more scrutiny now around, you know, introducing new services, buying new products, creating a new Kubernetes cluster, right? Um, budgets are essentially a lot tighter. Uh, then they were in 2021 when, you know, everything was like, you know, growth at all costs. <laughs> now uh, people are trying to be more economical. So obviously they're looking at the uh, cost side of this, uh, of this growth as well. And as they are looking at cost side of the growth, how are your technologies enabling teams to become more cost efficient? You know, all of our products, uh, obviously they save you cost. Uh, they improve developer productivity. So they make you more efficient. Um, but they don't necessarily, you know, if you have a big Java application, it's not like we make it any slimmer, right? <laughs> the actual workload is not what we focus on. There are a lot of other companies who focus on, on that particular uh, topic, but we're essentially concerned about uh, how do you run your Kubernetes infrastructure more efficiently? There's a lot of companies who have a lot of cluster sprawl. They're creating new clusters over and over again, um, or they have massively huge clusters and a lot of inefficiencies in these clusters. And vCluster and our virtualization technology for, for Kubernetes is one big piece that essentially helps you um, run Kubernetes more efficiently. So instead of running 300 individual clusters of a lot of redundancies, you can now run one or two clusters and then you have 300 virtual clusters running on top of it. So you have like shared monitoring, shared logging, you know, shared ingress, shared Istio, all of these things can be shared now. And obviously there's a much greater uh, savings potential when you can actually share them. And the big thing about virtual clusters as well is you can turn them off and on again, you know, when, when things are being used or not being used, right? So let's say you have a Kubernetes cluster that is primarily used for development, right? Um, probably nobody needs that on a Sunday afternoon, right? So how would we turn it off over the weekend, right? A real Kubernetes cluster with all of these, you know, monitoring, logging, etc., running inside of it, it's much harder to tear down and spin up again within a uh, within a day, right? But with a virtual cluster, you can literally do that in minutes um, because it relies on this shared underlying infrastructure and platform stack. So you can literally uh, have that virtual cluster automatically be, you know, spun down while you are going for a lunch break or a two-hour meeting, right? Um, and then essentially you're saving all the Kubernetes cost. Uh, if you are, you know, underlying Kubernetes cost, there's auto scaling enabled, which again, is just a couple of clicks in, uh, you know, AWS or Google Cloud, et cetera. What are you seeing? What are companies, what are your customers doing to become more cost efficient? Yeah, I think a lot of companies, uh, instead of uh, trying to, you know, lay off a bunch of people, et cetera, uh, they essentially, the first step is to have like, you know, um, budgets in place uh, that are much tighter than they were beforehand, uh, potentially hiring freezes, right? Um, and so, you know, IT teams and engineers uh, have to do the same kind of workload or even more workload with the same amount of people, right? Um, in, in the worst case scenario where you have layoffs, they have to even do it with less amount of people than they were last week, right? And that forces them to essentially focus on efficiency so they need to find uh, tooling and they need to find, um, you know, ways so their productivity increases so they can essentially, um, you know, work the same amount of workloads uh, with potentially fewer people, fewer resources, uh, fewer uh, reduced budgets, right? Um, and that's, that's obviously a, 
pretty important right now for a lot of companies. And I think our tooling, you know, especially when you look at the developer side of things, you know, with um, with vCluster, it's so easy to spin up virtual clusters. You can create a Kubernetes cluster, dispose of it again. You don't have to worry too much about like debugging it. If something doesn't work, right? Just, you know, dispose of it, create a new one. Same with our tool dev space. Uh, you can essentially streamline your dev workflow. So instead of running all these manual commands, right? It's wasting a lot of time. You can more efficiently build applications directly inside the Kubernetes cluster and um, obviously increase the you know, likelihood that this will smoothly run later on in production because you've already tested it on Kubernetes. Um, so you're definitely increasing your efficiency uh, that way. And we're not talking about, you know, reducing infrastructure costs uh, in this stage. It's really about, you know, e each individual developer's um, performance essentially increases with, with tools like that. Um, and at the same time, the team is more efficient because a lot of like, you know, when you look at dev space, big part of dev space is, in a way, implicit like knowledge sharing, right? We have so much procedural knowledge. If you have, you know, more senior developer, they know so many tricks and things to get around, right? Uh, much faster than than a more junior person. Um, when you have a when you have something like DevSpace, you have actually a DevSpace YAML file in your repository where more senior folks can codify their knowledge, and then junior folks can run the same way without actually, you know knowing all of the details under the hood. And that definitely boosts team productivity as well, uh, you know, as a whole. As organizations are taking these measures, how are your technologies enabling, empowering them to be with them in this journey of becoming more productive, innovative, of course, safe and secure, and just cost efficient? Yeah, one of our uh, customers is uh, Atlan, for example. We have a case study about them on our website that we recently, uh, you know, posted there. And they essentially run, you know, each one of their customers in a Kubernetes cluster because their application is very cloud native. They launch workloads and containers through their, you know, API or UI. Um, and so each individual customer basically needs their own Kubernetes cluster, which is very, very expensive to run, right? It's very um, cost intense to do that, right? Um, and now that everybody is like so cost conscious, they are essentially, uh, you know, banking on vCluster to now run their customers inside virtual clusters rather than real clusters. So they literally went down from 100 plus real Kubernetes clusters uh, to just one, right? And then they now have over 100 virtual clusters uh, running on top of it. Um, and that's obviously much more effective. The same counts for the development, right? In development, essentially, each one of their devs needs their own Kubernetes cluster to essentially test and build the application. Um, and now they can just spin up virtual clusters, work inside of them, um, work on different branches, right? Work on new features, um, and all in the in these virtual environments that cuts cost uh, by a lot. Most customers we see uh, can reduce their cost of virtual cluster by a magnitude of like forty percent, right? And that's that's a big number if you're thinking about you know hundreds or even thousands of virtual clusters, which some of the enterprises out there are actually running. Um, that's a huge chunk of cost you can you can cut off by just running Kubernetes more efficiently with virtualization. What is your advice to companies who are looking at improving performance, productivity, stay innovative, and become cost effective? Yeah, I think the first thing is to not uh, lose track of you know all the tools and what everybody's purchasing. I think uh, being very considerate about are we starting to use this resource and where is it catalogized right right like where can i where can i get an overview of uh all of the things that we're using right a lot of the the, the problems actually with with the cloud is you know people spin things up and later on they lose track of it or you know there's employee churn or someone gets assigned to a different team and then six months later someone looks at this and says like do we still need this load balancer right <laughs> It's just like, it's such a trivial resource in, in a, you know, every AWS account, right? And you're like, where does it point to? You know, is that workload still running? Oh, there's some Kubernetes cluster. What is, what is going on there, right? And I think essentially there's a lot of solutions, you know, um, that help you create this catalog of things that you own in your cloud provider, but also, you know, overall, like, which services are we running? What is part of which service? Tagging strategies, right? 
keeping that overview is really, really important so that you can actually go over the things that you may not need anymore, right? Because a lot of infrastructure is just laying around producing costs, <laughs> not actually being used. And that's a, that's a big focus of, of it. And obviously very, very important uh, in the Kubernetes space. There have been some great projects which um, are, you know, uh, steps in the right direction, I would call it. Uh, one of them is, uh, you know, Spotify open sourced uh, Backstage um, as one of the projects where you can have this like service catalog where you can specify like who is working on what and what is part of this service and where can I find it, right? And that definitely goes in the right direction, but obviously there needs to be a lot more automation around like actually pulling in the cloud provider resources, making sure you're running it uh, as efficiently uh, as possible. Lucas, thank you for sitting down with me and discuss this important topic. I appreciate your insights and I look forward to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Absolutely, it was a pleasure. Thank you, Swapno. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed our discussion, please don't forget to hit the like button. If you want to be notified when we post our next great interview, please click on the subscribe button and you'll get a mail in your inbox. See you in the next video. Thank you.